first met, it was actually at a fundraising gala and it was held at a beautiful venue and we had to get tickets for this venue. But even with tickets, there was this long line that was outside. And for me, I didn't want to stand in the line. So <laughs> I found a nice group of gentlemen that uh, I believed would go along with my plan, which was to uh, say, hi guys, thanks for saving our spot in line, just so that we can get closer to the entrance. And in that group of men were uh, a friend of ours and my husband. And uh, he, of course, was the, the one out the group that did not wanna let us in. He was very reluctant to let us cut them in line, but um, we ended up getting in front of them anyway. <laughs> uh, well, uh, um, I was in Bible school. The first year <laughs> students would always be in the first row, you know. And, um, and so there she was smiling and she was playing the organ, you know. And, uh, and uh, somebody said we were singing the song. Bless me, oh my Savior, bless me. <laughs> but to me, it's like I wasn't looking for a spiritual blessing. And, and um, that's how I saw and was captivated by what I saw. Well, uh, my sister had a friend coming to see her. And every time that friend came, Earl was always with him. No, what? And we wonder why he would always no, come. What? He had eyes on me, but I didn't <laughs> know it. No. So finally he started talking to me and then he started taking me out for rides and from that, that's about it. We first met in freshman year in high school. Uh, it was in math class, Miss Williamson's class to be exact. And she caught my eye as a young ninth grader. I believe I was about 14 years old. That's my first meeting of her and we we had a small conversation she probably doesn't remember that though <laughs> i was serving at church and i served so much that i know everyone that comes through those doors and one day lee comes through the doors down my aisle and he walks up to me and he's like i just wanted to let you know that you're the most beautiful woman i've ever seen mm. Bars. <laughs> and me, you kind of have to understand the church that we went to. It was um, it was a church of a lot of good looking people, a lot of actors, actresses. Um, and it's a church where, you know, you can just meet anyone, you know. So when he had came up to me and approached me and said that, I was like, okay, 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 okay. All right, just just go take your seat, sir. Like, I, I see your game. So, yeah, so then, like, you know, every week he would come in and say hi to me, like very small talk. He always acknowledged me. I, did, I didn't know who he was. And he did some, what do, how do I want to say it? <laughs> I call it stalking, but he doesn't lie. This is on camera now. This is for people. It's not really stalking, but I just say it because I know it gets under his skin. <clears throat> but um, he stalked I call it, me. I call it like spiritual research. Wow. Well, um, we on always, set. yeah, we met on set. Yeah. And uh, we were filming a web series called Last to Love. She and was the star. <laughs> she was the star of the web series. Steven played the only like male character in the whole web series that I, my character wasn't dating. So we played like friends yeah. and had one scene together and um, actually two scenes. The first scene we had was a wedding and he was marrying my character's best friend. So he was like, it's kind of funny because 
we the first time we were ever like together we were like one person over from being married it looks like um mm. and i felt it too i felt it. no you didn't you were just trying to do your stuff <laughs> not, not and, and the crazy thing is uh how we met was my first scene as an actor ever mm -hmm. so like our scene together was my first scene ever yeah so that's another first we have a mutual friend from philly which is crazy because we're from philly mm -hmm. but never ever met each other in philly at all it wasn't until i was in la and he was in la that we met each other and one of our friends um i was hanging with her at uh i think it was like vanessa williams party or something mm -hmm. yeah i was hanging with her at a party and she knew him and she was like oh my homie todd let's go talk to him mm -hmm. and i'm like oh i heard of that name in philly because i remember when i started acting in philly i would like hear about different actors and he was one of the names that I would always hear about that would do different plays. You know what I'm saying. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so she walked me over to him, we introduced, she introduced us um, and I, she was like, yeah, y'all should get to know each other. Y'all from Philly, you know? I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So we exchanged numbers because he did tell me he was like moving out here or I think you had I just, just moved, moved out here. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we exchanged numbers, and at that time, I was a producer at an acting studio. So I had invited him to the studio, and that's how we connected. He started coming to the acting class. We were in college, so we, we went to college together. That's where, that's where we met, at University of North Carolina at Greensboro. And uh, so I was walking to a... Where was I going? I was going to do homework, which is very unusual wow. for me at that time. I heard people in the lobby, and uh, what I was hearing in the lobby were uh, scriptures. So I wanted to go check it out, and so I walked into the room, and there were, it was him and several other guys. And I was like, "Hey guys, <laughs> what are you, what are you doing?" I'm I'm Denisha, and they were having a, a Bible study slash music group, and so I asked if I could join, and that was the first time that I got to meet this guy. He was wearing these. Uh, these uh, blue and white striped pants that look like conductor pants, and I remember I really liked them. <laughs> That's how I did it. Just wore the <laughs> pants, and I knew the I knew the right one would. I knew it'd find her. That's it. <laughs> we grew up a, uh, across the street from each other. We both lived in Inglewood. Us being four years uh, apart made it difficult. Um, kind of sometimes for the friendship because she was so much younger. But we um, had a family connection. She had older cousins. So we had just kind of always were together doing different things at my house uh, in the neighborhood. Um, she lived next door to my best friend, Freddie Patterson, and he played baseball. So we played a lot of baseball in front of his house. So she lived right next door. I got to see her a lot and we interacted all the time. She has a younger brother, Scooter, and uh, he was kind of tagged along with us when we did play baseball, basketball, football. So that's kind of how our families or how we got to know each other. The first, I guess, sparks, you want to say? Um, okay, yeah. So she, <laughs> she invited me to uh, showcase her managers were putting on at mm -hmm. the time. Just friends at this time. Yeah. And um, I go to the showcase, meet her manager. She was like, just come, you know, you need, you know you're know, you looking for representation. It was pretty much that. So I went and hung out with him, had a chance to just, you know, send him my info. But I told her after we left how much I appreciated it and, you know, I owed you lunch. So, and it was really, yeah. like, genuine. It was, it was no sparks at this point. Mm -hmm. I think maybe, I don't know how long later it was maybe a week or two i think it was uh, like two weeks because we missed the first opportunity because of something and then okay it was like in my mind when he reached out it was like he, he said you know we, we didn't make it last week let's go to lunch today it was like a friday or something and i remember in my mind I, because i already have a son and this particular friday if i'm being transparent i had no money and no food to feed him. I was literally, literally walking in a 99 cent store to buy some oodles and noodles for dinner. <laughs> and when I got the text, I was like, come on, Taiki, we going to dinner. <laughs> so it wasn't like a date at Excuse all. Me, <laughs> Cause Use I, if me, man. No, no, for my chicken. <laughs> Because <laughs> if, if, if it was a date for me, I would have never took my son. I'm thinking, oh, the homie wants to, he owe me lunch or dinner. I didn't owe you. Not owe me, but. You know, but I offered yeah. 
And it was the second offer, so I'm like, we And we went to Roscoe's. We went to Roscoe's, yeah. We went to Roscoe's. Yeah. And she brought her son. And, uh, and it, I mean, it was cool. Like, I, you know, I had no expectations. It wasn't, it was genuinely like, hey, thank you. And then we can get to know each other over lunch even more. Because yeah. I don't, we knew each other, but I don't think we really, because I didn't even know she had a son. So yeah. we didn't really know a lot about each other. Yeah. And then through that, I think through that meeting, is what sparked more like let me get to know her more yeah we're going to a dance so i thought and she didn't have an ex school not as her co-worker so she invited me and she hooked me then he drove us to the dance i think it was in rocky math it was and he drove us there, and then from then on, I could not get rid of him. No, but she she threw out the first book, but she invited me to that dance. So we all were able to connect on writing music together. We were connecting on, um, he would invite me to church, and I was like, no, I don't want to go to church. But we would, we would connect over um, just music. And then I was like, this guy's really cool. I really like him. And he had a girlfriend at the time. So I was like, great, because then we could just be friends. Like, it's no, there's nothing, like, I want to just be friends. So I was really excited that we were all able to just hang. There was no weirdness. There was no, he wasn't going to, you know, fall fall for me. Because he had a girlfriend, so we could just be friends. Um, then we broke up. Th then he broke up with his girlfriend. <laughs> and hey. he started to invite me to church. And then I started coming to church. And we started serving at church, like through serving and hanging out and writing music together. We started, I I started to really, really like this guy. It's like, it's telling my mom about him and I don't know. Yeah, we were friends. I mean, we started yeah. like in the music group. We were just doing music mm -hmm. together and um, eventually going to church together, hanging out with the same people. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, like she said, we would see each other around campus and we were we were friends at the beginning yeah. so that's how that's how that began i um was in a very much it's just me and you god season where i was in finally enjoying being single um you know i wasn't looking for marriage i wasn't looking for anyone to date um i just love being single for once in my life i think women a lot of the time are always like, I can't wait to see me and my husband, my husband, my husband, my husband. I want to be married, married, married. And I actually was in a place where I was like, I'm okay. Like, I don't need it right now. I'm okay. I'm enjoying this of getting to know myself and working on myself and um, basically preparing myself for marriage without even knowing it. So when he would come up to me every week or do his small talk. I'd be like, okay, 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 cool, 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 cool. Okay, keep it moving. Um, so then, <laughs> in his <I'm> <laughs> spiritual research, there you go. Um, he started befriending <clears throat> my my guy friends. Wisdom. We have one one very good friend, JT, <clears throat> who we're still very close with to this day. And JT will call me and be like, yeah, this this guy Lee, I don't know, he just. Uh, She's a good dude. And I'm like, okay, great. How's your day, JT? You my know? Man, my man. And um My man. And he's like, you know, he's he's really he's a really good guy. I I just never met anyone like him. Because mm. Lee Lee is a re a very, very good guy. And he does stuff for people that you men and people just normally don't do. And Apparently he had been going to the church two years before me. I was. I didn't believe it. And <laughs> I was going to the church way before Ashley was, but when it came to that church, I would go to church and listen to the word and leave. I, I wasn't really conversing with people like that. I, I didn't have a lot of friends there or actually friends there in yeah. general. Yeah. So I, I was just <laughs> kind of in and out. So I was kind of to myself, I would just go, go in and pop out. And that was why she didn't really know me because she was more of the popular one in church with friends. I wouldn't say I was the popular one. You were more I popular just, than I was. I just served a lot. You served so you got to know you had a community. You yes, had a community I, of servers. So okay. me, I was just kind of in and out, you know. We were still friends and I was used to buddy, buddy JT, right? He's seen me in my pajamas and my scarf 
all the things. Cornrows. Cornrows. He's seen me, right? Stripped down, bare. And so, well, but but <laughs> but maybe. not but not like that as not friends, okay? Bare. Um, and so it was it was kind of weird and awkward for me for us to transition from homies to now we're going out. And when I say that, meaning like he's pulling out the chairs, he's being very gentleman-like, he's he's being boyfriend JT, and I wasn't ready for that. I just wanted to experience like, huh, let me just take a look and see. And I know, I know it sounds silly because you, you're that guy, that is, that's who he is. It's not like he was putting on an act or anything. But for me, I'm like, I wanted the homie, I wanted to do something like real chill, laid back. He takes me to this really nice restaurant and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like it just felt so, it just. Man, such a terrible, it, uh, terrible guy. Right. I'm like, can you take me to that place <laughs> just now, you please? Tell, <laughs> just telling the story is like, dang. No, it is not. It's just, it's, that just shows where I was at the time. I was just not in that space. Um, After growing up, I watched her. She was, uh, she was the cute girl in the neighborhood. All the guys liked her. They kind of hung out and chased her, chased after her. So, um, but I always, or we always had a really good, friendly connection. Um, we never dated. We never did anything like that until, gosh, we were in our twenties. I was 20s. in my early twenties. Yeah. Like I was twenty-one, somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah, and I was twenty-four, going on twenty-five, and uh, I, um, how that got started i saw her one day she was actually sitting on the porch of her parents house with her boyfriend and because there was no relationship we you know we were talking and she said her cousin tanya which was we were all very good friends she said tanya was having a party out of her house in fullerton and asked me if i wanted to go i said sure so this particular cousin which she's the closest to she and i are the closest um, was just, it was her birthday, I believe. Mm -hmm. And we were just going to go out and hang out and he knew her. And so that's why it was so easy to invite him. Um, and also I wanted somebody to drive me out there because <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to drive. So anyway, uh, and now I'm trying to think like, how did I ditch my boyfriend? When we talked about going, she was sitting on her mom's porch talking to her boyfriend. Yeah. But he, I came to your car right. to talk about it. Right. right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's funny because I knew her boyfriend. We all grew up together in the same neighborhood. So we yeah. were all friends. So there was no, you know, when she came to talk to me, there was just, yeah, it he was, was just, like, okay, we're nothing going on. Yeah. yeah. Just but, a little friendly conversation. Oh, funny enough is that his, it's his best friend. Um, his name is Willie. Um, and he was, I was actually closer to his best friend than I was to him. And he came to me and was like, you know how kids do. And he's like, oh, I know somebody that likes you. And I was like, you know, who? And then when he told me who it was, I was kind of dating somebody at the time. And so I was like, mm, I'm cool, you know. We went to prom together. He was supposed to take someone else. And he, he, <laughs> he did, and he ditched her for me. I'm sorry. So there were rules at the school that if you're first year students, you, student, you can't date, you know, which to me was absolutely ridiculous, but I think they knew why they did what they said, what they they, they, they did. I guess we needed to protect ourselves. We, we really didn't talk for a while because she was unapproachable to the sense that every time she would see me, she would avoid me. And um, when I was encourage you got to do something because everybody was out there trying to fish you hear all the guys say what they're doing who they spy who they want and you know and, and one girl who was my friend her friend said you got to move man you got to move so i was uh, was a letter you know yes, we were able to smuggle a letter <laughs> <laughs> through her you know and the response was not encouraging it was like you know the rules. <laughs> First year don't date. And good stick things to come to those who wait. So stick to the rules. And I remember in prayer, and I saying to God, I don't know anything about what is God's will, but I know what is my will. And this is what 
I wanted was I was asking God for permission because I didn't know anything about, you know, the will of the Lord to get a wife. Because even though I was in Bible school, I was only about a year or something saved. So I was still trying to find, but this is what I, you know, I got from her. I couldn't wait. Too many people were trying to get there. But eventually, you know, it went on and we endured through the year and it worked out. Honestly, this is what led me, let me get to know him more. We both got a group text, our friends. We, like I said, we have mutual friends. And at Roscoe's, we both got a group text saying, let's go to our other friend's house who's having a game night tonight. Anybody who knew Lena knew when I'm invited, my son comes with me. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm bringing my son, we'll be there. So we, I ended up just driving with him. We went and picked up another one of our friends on the way. And I love games, like I love game nights. That was one of the things that we always did in our home or whatever with my friends. And the whole time I'm playing games with the group of people, he's off to the side with my son. I think like listening to music or playing on just, an yeah, iPad just, or just- I was just entertaining him because yeah. he was the only kid there. <laughs> and I just felt, that not felt bad, but it was like, I'm not about to leave him over here on the side, like you know. So I was just like, man, I'll I'll entertain him and still kind of play games, but for the most part, you know, be his friend. Yeah, and I kept having this like moment of that's interesting. Wow, like I saw that connection, but still there was such a guard up that I wasn't going too far into it, but I did see it at that time. Like that's that's dope. I like that. He wasn't my type. I've never dated a light skinned guy. He just wasn't my, my type. In. And that's the I, truth. You know, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> so she wasn't interested, which was fine. I, we, neither one of us were interested until we started spending more time after this yeah. Roscoe's event. Yeah. Um, then we, I think we got a scene together. And we went and rehearsed. I went and rehearsed at her place. Yeah. And then just seeing the the lifestyle her as a mom and then her coming back in and trying to do the scene and stuff like that that's when i started it started twirling in my mind of oh you know what she's actually not as guarded as she seems to be we were talking at the rap party yeah and then um we ended up leaving at the same time i still feel like he timed that like I was like, okay, bye guys. He's like, oh yeah, I'm going to. But um, <laughs> um, I had to go. <laughs> had to we were coming down the elevator and he's like, oh, uh, where are you parked? Uh, can I walk you to your car? So I was like, oh sure, of course. It's dark, it's late, walk me to my car. So he walked me to my car and then I was like, oh, where are you parked? I should drive you to your car. <laughs> so he was parked so like- I set that up. <laughs> he was parked like a block away, but we just like sat in the car for like 45 minutes. And we were just talking about really about like faith, about God, yeah. about a lot of stuff. And then I invited him to this Bible study that I was going to. And um, it was kind of, in, it was it was very intense because I remember I invited him and I told him like, there's all kinds of miracles happening. There's, and I was explaining all this stuff. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm, I probably sound like a nut job. Just like, I don't know this guy that well. And then he goes, Hmm. If God is doing that every day externally, then I wonder what he's doing every day internally with me. And I was like, what did you say? Wait a minute. <laughs> and so, but um, yeah, I, I kind of drove home and I was like, I don't know. I just felt like, well, to be honest, I felt like it was my husband. But I told myself, girl, you just saying that because he's fine. And you. so I just instead, I was like, my brother in Christ, thank you, God. Bless him. Bless his life. When I really met her and really talked with her, I feel like everything was about Jesus. You know, I felt like everything was about purpose. I felt like everything was was moving in that direction. Um, and it, it wasn't any fluff. It wasn't any small talk. It was no. everything yeah. led back to God. There was like no God. small talk. It was just like, boom, like, what are you doing here? What are we doing? Come to my Bible study. It was very intense. <laughs> very direct. And I was like, you my wife. And it was just like, you know, there, there was no, there was no um, hesitancy. 
the only hesitancy I think for us was, you know, we we prayed about uh, our relationship. We prayed about everything. So it was just like, okay, you know, we want to make sure that every step is ordered by God. We're like making sure to, mm -hmm. okay, and every, uh, and, you know, acknowledge him and everything. Yeah. So that was the only thing, but yeah. And then we went on a, on a picnic, on walks. And then um, we it, it just always led back to the Lord. Yeah. E every conversation. Where are you from? I'm from Houston. Oh, that's so amazing. Oh, da 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 da. Um, so I just love Jesus so like <laughs> I was like, this I, this is it. This one is, this is it. So the the party, um, it was just a few people there. Yeah. yeah. And to walk you through that, like I don't even remember other than just us dancing, yeah. right? Yep. Just and we were all. I mean, it was like a group dance. It, I think I might have been the only, only guy, guy there. there. I was gonna say that. <laughs> the only guy there. And I was gonna say that, yeah. and I was like, "Am I yeah. remembering correctly?" It because you were the, only, the guy only guy there, guy right? There. So it. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, we we had been dancing and just kind of hanging out and having fun all night, and then. Uh, with the help of Luther, Luther Vandross, oh house is not that home. Didn't, that didn't come in a little bit later. But that was that was the song that kind of made everything right for us and made us, or or actually made us focus on the relationship. And it was just that song that I think kind of sparked that interest that was all, always there. But um, when you're you know, when you've never really thought about the dating part mm -hmm. or the dating aspect, mm -hmm. it was just friends. Um, it was... It was very organic. Very, mm -hmm. very, very. Very just, organic. That song came on, yeah. we danced, and literally have been together ever since, so... Yeah. I pursued, 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 pursued. I pursued until I was like, I looked crazy to people, you know. And when when I thought that the pursuit was... In vain, finally, I said, okay, fine, you know? And then I go on off and I start dating and I actually enter into a whole nother relationship. And then she entered into a whole nother uh, situation herself. Why is my thing a situation well, yours was a relationship? Well, I know I'm speaking from my perspective. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't know. He was very actively pursuing me. And um, it wasn't until- As men should be. Yes, they should. Um, it wasn't until I went on a mission trip mm -hmm. in March of that, that year. To New Orleans. To New Orleans. And <clears throat> I came back and my life like completely changed from that moment. From April 2014 on, my life completely changed mm -hmm. because I, um, our good friend who was now actually JT's wife, Elena, <laughs> Uh, also went on that mission trip with me, and we just so happened to be at the same uh, cafe one day after doing more mission work. <laughs> and um, we were downtown, and I was like, "Oh, I like this this little cafe. Let me go, you know, get something." And she just so happened to be there, and we're like, "Oh, we'll have lunch together." And she was telling me about this Bible study um, in the valley. And she's like, yeah, you got to come, yada, yada, yada. That's, 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 that's how we met. That's how we met our spiritual father. Dr. Prophet Lovi. Lovi L. Elias. Yeah. And um, back then it was just Lovi's because it was just in his house. Mm -hmm. And um, I went for the first time and he prophesied over me. He said, marriage is uh, right around the corner and mm. the right one is coming. Mm. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, like, I mean, I received it, but I didn't put too much thought behind it because I, I wasn't aware of, um, prophecy like that. I, I wasn't introduced to prophecy until literally the month prior, um, during my mission trip. And, um, yeah, so he had prophesied that over me and I was, just went on with my life. And then the next week I just had this aha moment of like, Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. He said marriage is coming, the right ones around the corner. And then I was like, oh, that guy Lee. <laughs> like, because mind you, he had already been actively pursuing mm -hmm. me and I had been brushing him off. And he'd been asking me, like, oh, you know, to go out on a date with him. And I'm like, no, 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 you know. And so finally. She played me a little bit. 
I did. I I did give him the runaround. I did. Yeah. I called him my, my brother in Christ. Yeah. So him. about that. When we finally, things finally aligned again, where relationship is over and we're we're now in this space that we can see each other. I think, I believe that those failed relationships and that distance of time caused us to really present ourselves to one another in a way that we could actually see the value again. They could say we see the highest mountain